There are so many things happening in the world uh, today that are creating a sense of disillusionment for all of us. Um, and I hear the sense of disillusionment from my clients. They are overwhelmed by the news often on a daily basis. Um, some events confirm their greatest fears about trust or lack of trust in the external world or a lack of trust in humanity. There are clients that I see who will tell me that they're in a spiritual crisis. They're in an existential crisis. Um, and the events that they're exposed to, whether it's directed towards them or towards somebody that they love or just watching the news, um, they these events confirm their greatest fears, right? And they trigger prior traumas. Some of the clients talk about trust that they had in democracy, in safety, in society. And some of my younger uh, clients actually have been talking more and more about how they don't want to have children as they, they feel hopeless about issues like gun violence and climate change. So I find it personally very difficult to just reassure them. And I try not to dismiss those fears because they feel very real to me as well. Um, and so, um, you know, I can't just sort of blanketly reassure people and say, let's stay hope, let's stay hopeful despite all of this. And at the same time, I do think it's important in psychotherapy to hold the despair as well as the hope. One of the ways I tend to help clients cope with the disillusionment is to explore what it may mean for them to be living in a, in a more dangerous world. I try not to minimize this feeling, but rather to talk about what it may uniquely mean for them in their life or the life you know, of a loved one. And I also try to consider with them that there might be other moments where they do feel hopeful. Um, and so we often end up talking about how to connect with things like nature, people they love, activities they enjoy as a way of holding hope. Um, they might seem very basic, but it in some ways, it's really important to connect back to the basic when you don't feel a sense of safety in the world um, and you feel this disillusionment with what you thought um, was, was the real world. Um, for some clients, it's, it's actually, it can be really helpful to engage in some type of social action or creative arts uh, to both express their pain and their disillusionment, but also move towards hope. Um, Another thing I try to do with my clients is to make a distinction very explicitly between a sense of being disillusioned and remaining hopeless. Disillusionment can lead to confusion and a loss of a cohesive sense of self. And one of the things I try to emphasize is that sometimes disillusionment can lead us to new ways of seeing ourselves or seeing the world that may not have been possible otherwise. Um, so for example, feeling disillusioned with someone in your family or, um, a friend can be very painful, but it can also allow you to see some imperfections, which may be a part of moving towards a more real or authentic understanding of a relationship with that person, you know, so that, um, sometimes, um, if we stay dis if we stay sort of mystified and we don't know, uh, more fully, um, you know, what's, what's happening for a person or what a person is like, then we sort of remain in the dark, so to speak around, you know, um, the authentic part of a relationship. So I try to make that distinction around disillusionment and hopelessness, uh, with my clients. One of the things that I have found really interesting about disillusionment in our recent times is how, um, there's sometimes there's a our hopefulness about um, the world around us can lead us to also deny certain realities about the world. You know, there's a way, for example, when I think about the Me Too movement, um, there was a large collective denial of violence against women and girls and um, and sexual violence more broadly. And when and what Me Too did was it sort of it shook all of that up. It broke the denial and it 
in some ways we can say, well, that was disillusioning, you know, to think that we haven't made as much progress in this area as we thought. And, uh, and yet breaking through that denial allows us to kind of see that there is work to be done, but in the process of being disillusioned, we're also connecting with other people and, and through that collective movement, there can be positive change and hope for the future. And the fact that people are courageous enough to speak out um, allows me to p- potentially speak out as well, or allows me to connect with um, th- both the pain of it and the, the pain of violence, but also it allows me to um, see that there could be change that comes by being a part of this greater movement or a part of speaking out and facing that uh, that reality. So there's a way in which disillusionment, I think, can certainly, you know, um, involve pain and despair, but it can certainly lead to um, an awakening uh, of a sort to do something differently, to engage in action, to engage in behaviors that lead us to a better place ultimately. So there's the short term despair and a long term goal of moving towards a better place, moving towards safety, a sense of belonging and, and, um, an affirmation of oneself. 